Welcome to the first of five videos exploring the VCU-based design example for Avnet's Ultra ZEV Starter Kit. This design example enables the hardware accelerated processing of H.264 and H.265 video in the EV family of Zinc UltraScale Plus and PSOC devices. In this video, we're going to review the example design and the repository structure, looking at key elements of the Vivado block design, the organization of the repository, and documentation designed to help you get started working with this in your own development effort. So the first place we're going to start is show you how to locate this reference design. So we're going to start on the Element 14 homepage and go under Find Products and go to the Zboard community. Now on the right-hand side, you should see a little Zboard community navigation box, and we're going to go down and select the Ultra Z Dev Board, and expand that, and click on the link to the Ultra Z EV Dev Board. Uh, once we've landed on the Ultra Z EV page, we're going to go select Content. And I'm going to filter by blog post, even though there's only one. You'll see there's an Ultra ZEV video codec unit design blog post. So we're going to click on that. So this post does a brief introduction to the VCU, if you're not familiar with the terminology. Provides a link to more documentation about this uh, hardware acceleration block and the UltraScale Plus EV devices. And then a link to the VCU design example uh, release notes. <clears throat> so let's go over here. I've got this open in another tab and take a look at the uh, initial release of this design example. So the design example is actually hosted out on GitLab in a publicly available repository. And uh, what's available in this design is a pre-built Petal Linux BSP. So if you want to go and customize the Linux image to get started with the uh, Vivado design, it also includes pre-built SD card images to boot from micro SD on the starter kit. Uh, if you just want to go do a quick evaluation and start, start using the VCU, uh, there are complete instructions included in the repository for testing this design on the starter kit. And then also included some documentation to sort of demystify the porting process if you're interested in the, the process side of things and understand what went into getting this design up and running on the starter kit because it is based on Xilinx's reference design on the ZCU-106 board. Um, we'll talk about the test documentation a little bit in here in a few minutes. Uh, I wanted to start by giving you a quick overview of the architecture So we'll start with the processor subsystem block. Uh, the design is broken up into a processor subsystem and then a top-level design, just to make the top-level block diagram a little bit cleaner. This just has your Zinc processor subsystem, uh, all the in and out ports and your clock connections. It's got an AXI interconnect and a processor reset. There's some details on what the AXI connections uh, are used for in this block design. And then the top-level design, uh, this is the most interesting piece of the design. You've got your processor subsystem block here that's kind of collapsed. We've got AXI GPIO interconnects uh, for the LED onboard LEDs, the dip switches, and the push buttons in the starter kit. We've also got a dedicated AXI block here for the VCU encoder, a dedicated AXI path for the decoder, one for the onboard MCU inside of the video codec unit. We've got an interrupt concatenation block to take the interrupts uh, from the VCU to the processor. We've also got a slice over here that allows GPIO control of the VCU reset uh, by software and by drivers. And then we've got a clock wizard that brings in the onboard clock from the starter kit to generate all of the frequencies we need in this design. There's a little bit more detail about all the elements of this block. So uh, in addition to the block design, let's take a look at um, how you can actually get a hold of this project. So um, from the top level project page in the repository, gitlab.com, uh, you can go over here and select clone. You can clone this if you're familiar with Git, clone it via SSH or HTTPS, and this is publicly available project. Or if you're not really using Git or you just want to grab you know, a zip file or a tarball, there's a link um, back here in the blog post to the release notes. And so there is actually a release, which you can also navigate to project releases. And you'll see there's a tag in the repository for this release. And you can click here on source code and download a, a zip or a tar tarball of the complete repository snapshot for this demo release. And this includes all the things we've talked about, the Petal Linux BSP files, pre-built SD images, all the test documentation and porting process. And then here on the release notes, I'll just highlight there's some additional information about what tools were used, what host OS environments were used to generate this reference design. You'll notice two versions of Ubuntu because Vivado can be used under 18.04. Uh, 
but Petalinux uh, for 2018.3 still requires older versions of glibc that are only available in Ubuntu 16.04. So that's why you see two host OSs here. Um, let's take a look at the test documentation. And uh, you can click here on the release note links to the test documentation, which I've got open in another tab. Um, the test doc documentation is actually designed and set up to walk you through from the beginning. So if you don't have experience with any of this, you're going to start out uh, downloading the pre-built images, putting them on your SD card maybe, or you can go build the Petalinux BSP. And then you want to start working with a display port. So um, we step through exploring the display port interface configuration if you're not familiar with that. Uh, configuring alpha blending, which you're going to need for doing some of the demonstrations, depending on the resolution uh, you're trying to display on the screen. And then we're going to culminate that by uh, doing a test pattern on the display to make sure that your display connection works properly. Then the next step is to work with the VCU decoder. Um, so we show how to step through how to test uh, a video decode on the display port output. And then um, after that, you're going to want to test the encoder. So the step, first step is you need a video source. So for ENCODE, we've chosen to use a USB webcam because those are pretty readily available and uh, supported pretty well in the, the, Linux, the Linux build. So you can plug in a webcam. We teach you how to go and um, explore the interface, understand all the configuration parameters, and then um, bring video in from that webcam and display it on your display port. So you've got kind of the input data flow going. And then the very last step, we're going to show you how to ENCODE that data and send it out over the network to a remote host. So that kind of will test the ENCODER piece of the process. Um, then the final piece of documentation in the repository is the uh, porting guide. And I just want to highlight this because some people might wonder, or if you've never brought a reference design over from a vendor, uh, Xilinx does these reference designs on their hardware and you may not har have their hardware. So this, is, this documents the process of bringing that reference design over to the Avnet uh, Ultra Z EV starter kit. And it just kind of walks through all the steps involved. So there's no magic to the process. It's really just uh, knowing, knowing sort of the workflow and stepping through um, and iterating on the design to bring it up to, up to a new hardware platform. So it starts with downloading the, what was the uh, TRD bundle from Xilinx. Then you have to download the current Ultra ZEV BSP. Um, and that was actually older than the tool set. So you have to bring that up to the current tool set. And that process is all documented in here. Um, including building interim images, images and testing them on the Xilinx reference board, then bringing that over to the Ultra Z starter kit and testing the same thing. So it just steps through and iterates through the process, uh, just to kind of give you an example of how to bring a design over. And then at the very, uh, very end of this, it shows you how to create all the targeted, targeted Petalinux uh, BSPs, so it walks through the entire generation of the content available in this um, repository. So hopefully this introduction to the project and repository was helpful. Uh, it's going to help you get started navigating the design example, knowing where to look for things. If you continue watching the next video in this series, you're going to learn more about the Vivado block design, including how to use the tickle scripts in this repository to go and generate the block design. If you want to use that as a basis for adding your own PL and, uh, and making modifications to that part of the design. Thanks for watching.